Ja, ich sitze jetzt hier mit Mark Burgess im Interview im Backstage vom von Bo. Hi Mark. Hallo. Hallo. How are you? Um, yeah, good. I'm very good, thank you. Yeah. Did you enjoy your gig here? I did. I think it was the most enjoyable one that we've done for quite a while, actually. Yeah. Yeah. First question here uh, in Kreis TV is, what's your favorite beer? My favorite beer? Oh my God. Um, I have to say, to be quite honest, consistently, I'd have to say Bex. Because it, I, I like... I like the fact that it's made there still. Yeah. Uh, every drop actually comes from Bremen, which mm. is, you know, usually they, they license the beer to other people make it and mm. call it the same thing, but it's not. But I mean, I like a lot of different ones. I like, I like German beers like Holsen and, and uh, Astra. I like Danish beer, Belgian beer. Don't like English beer much. I was on your side with Beck, not with Astra. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe some of our viewers didn't know much about the band history. Can you tell us a li little bit? Well, we formed in 1981, got a John Peel session, uh, which went stellar, um, signed to uh, CBS for three albums, but didn't end up making any albums for them. We just made one single and then they kicked us off the label because we were too much trouble, because we were still punks. Um, and then we went into like independent land for a bit, made Scripts of the Bridge, which became a really influential record for a lot of people who play music. Um, you know, our audiences are predominantly people who play an instrument, you know, in, an instrument. Um, we did, we, so we went through the 80s, made a few albums in the 80s, disintegrated in 1987, following a US tour, um, went our separate ways, did different things, and then got back together in 2000 for two years, um, and then that disintegrated again, um, and then I just started Chameleon's Vox, Uh, well, I was working as, as Chameleon's Vox uh, while well, I was still here in Hamburg, actually. Um, and then I went to England and John was playing again. And we decided to kind of get together with his band, which was called Bushheart. And I did some shows with them and it just kind of grew from that. Chameleon's Vox isn't really a band as such. It's, it's a collection of people who all love the Chameleon's music. Um, and that's, that was what it was about, it was, like, it was about keeping it alive. And I hadn't played Chameleon's music for a long time at that point. I hadn't, I hadn't played any. Um, so it kind of got me excited about playing Chameleon's music again. And we've got a new uh, EP just out um, with four very, well, three original tracks on and the Beatles cover. And um, that's Sycophants is the A side, and uh, we're gonna we're re I'm writing a new album with uh, ver a few people actually at the moment. I can't name names at the moment, but if you get the record and you read it, there'll be some surprises. Okay. I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What do you think about the 80s today? You know, I mean, I know it's become really popular. Uh, the 80s these days but at the time it was hard work you know you had like you had an underground kind of thing going on um which was much more interesting to me um and then obviously you had the huge super groups like simple minds and u2 and bands like that the cure i, I was really into talk talk in the 80s um you know i i've consistently liked the bunny men obviously um But, I mean, a lot of the pop music, used to, it used to irritate me. It was irritating. Duran Duran and all that shit. I hated all that. But, I mean, if Bowie was the one who made the great record with Let's Dance period and all that. I mean, they just showed them all how to do it, you know. I really liked his mainstream records. Yesterday you played in Berlin. And yeah. a few days uh, before you played in Paris. Is there yeah. places you prefer? It's always nice to be invited back to a place where You know, you've played for in, in the past and always had a good time. Paris is one of those cities. Berlin is. Hamburg is. Um, you know, Munster was interesting because the first gig we ever played in Germany, I think it was around about 1983, was in Munster at the Odeon. So that was uh, a, a thrill to go back there because I hadn't played in Munster for a long time. And we haven't. Um, but we go where kind of where we're invited to go, you know, and it's... It, Uh, the big interest is when you get invited to go to a place you've never got to play before. Mm -hmm. um, like at the end of this month, we're going to Dublin. Okay. And I've wanted the band to go to Ireland. I've, every time we work with an agent, I'm saying, we, I'd really like to go and play in Ireland. And for some reason, it could never happen. And now that it's finally happening at the end of yeah. the month. 
and you have a big uh, fan base in Hamburg. I saw it tonight. Uh, you lived in Hamburg for a while. What, what uh, was your favorite places here? Or my, well, my favorite, obviously, my favorite places in Hamburg were. Um, With the Caroline Fettel, obviously, in the Shanson Fettel. I love the Portuguese quarter uh, a lot, around St. Michael's. I love the Reaper Band. I love San Paulo. I mean, it was great because when I lived here, I lived, I was five minutes walking from all the really cool places. Yeah. I lived right in the center of the city. And yet, it didn't feel like I lived in the center of the city. It didn't, you know, it was a really calm kind of place where we lived. So, um, It was brilliant to be in the center of a city and then, and, but not actually have that kind of noisy, claustrophobic feeling. And yet I was only five or 10 minutes walk yeah. from anywhere. And, and one of my favorite things was actually the farmer's garden where I used to go on a Saturday morning to buy all my vegetables. And uh, they were all grown um, up in, um, in the uh, Altersland. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I mean, and Altersland was a beautiful place. I used to, you know, go there a lot. Um, my My parents, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law lived there. Um, so we, I would spend a lot of time on the Elba. Mm. Um, and I used to love getting the boat on the Elba. I mean, I used to love getting the ferry on the Elba. Um, I had a great time here. I mean, it's like one of my favorite cities in the world. It's, you know, there's Hamburg and there's San Francisco and there's Manchester and there's Athens. Um, Rome is a great city, but, but Hamburg is definitely like, you know, So, you record the new album uh, at the moment, At right? the moment, we're recording yeah. the new album. It's, it's called, yeah, it's called Eden and the End of the World. And we're, we're still writing for it. Um, I wrote, I, it, it is late anyway, because we had, a few, we had a few internal problems. But it's also late because a lot of the uh, material that I was getting together for it, I didn't really like in the end. It, it, it was too one-dimensional for me. I, want, I like to work with interesting writers, other people, guitar players and things, because it gives it more dimension. So I shelved a lot of it and started again. Um, but now it's really starting to take shape. The songs are really starting to take shape. They're interesting, they're different. Um, so I'm like quite excited about it, and I'm hoping that by the spring of the new, next year, we'll, it will have it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Good to hear. In the record label, they're going crazy. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have no deadline, I know artists, they have a problem with it. When It's they true. have, nope, deadline. It's true. Uh, uh, having no deadline can be the kiss. It can be a real problem. Yeah. You see, you know, you need to kick up the ass yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay, Mark, thank you very much well, thank for you. the interview. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of your tour. Thank you. Thanks very much. Very great pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much.